Secondary heart. Gene seed is the specially engineered genetic material that the Adeptus Astartes use to transform young human males into space marines. It consists of germ cells taken from the genetic blueprints of the 20 Primarchs, which grow into 19 unique organs, each one enhancing the recruit's physical abilities. The first organ is known as the secondary heart, or maintainer. This organ is implanted next to the natural heart and works in harmony with the circulatory and pulmonary systems to increase blood volume and pressure, ensuring that oxygen and nutrients are delivered well beyond normal human capabilities. It also acts as a backup pump, capable of keeping a person alive if the primary heart fails. Typically implanted between the ages of 10 and 12, the maintainer marks the beginning of a neophyte's transformation. The procedure is fairly straightforward, involving some rerouting of the circulatory system. Once it's up and running, it syncs with the original heart. In battle, this dual heart system allows the space marine to survive even the most severe injuries and meets the high metabolic demands of later implants. This remarkable process was developed in the 30th millennium by the Emperor of Mankind and his biotechnical division. Osmodula Often referred to as the iron heart, the osmodula is the second gene seed organ that gets implanted in neophytes. Placed next to the pituitary gland, it becomes part of the endocrine system and releases a unique growth hormone that reshapes the skeleton at a cellular level and sparks rapid bone growth. Typically implanted between the ages of 10 and 12, the osmodula kicks off a two-year growth phase. During this time, the neophyte's height can soar to around 2.1 to 2.3 meters, and their ribcage fuses into a single interwoven bone plate. This fusion not only offers enhanced protection for vital organs, but also contributes to the iconic bulk of the space marine. The fused ribcage serves as natural armor, while the reinforced skeleton enables Astartes to withstand blows. Although the organ remains stable, its enhancements can present challenges for apothecaries during open chest surgeries. Biscopia. This organ is placed in the chest cavity, usually alongside the secondary heart and osmodula. It releases hormones that speed up muscle fiber growth throughout the body, ensuring that the mass gained is proportional. This transformation turns the reinforced skeleton into a strong frame that gives superhuman strength and endurance. In the early years of development, the Biscopia ramps up its output, reshaping the neophyte's muscles into dense, regenerative tissue. This allows space marines to achieve feats such as operating power armor and engaging massive xenos in close combat without any mechanical help. The Biscopia provides explosive acceleration, fatigue resistance, and an edge in melee combat. While it generally functions well, its effectiveness relies on a successful integration with other organs. If there's a hormonal imbalance, it can lead to uneven growth or internal strain. Hemostamen Surgically embedded into a major blood vessel, the hemostamen is a crucial enhancement for a neophyte's circulatory system. It works by transforming blood chemistry, boosting the transport of oxygen and nutrients. This upgrade is what gives space marine blood its bright red color a clear sign of high oxygen levels. It ensures that vital organs get the biochemical support they need. It automatically adjusts hormone levels, helping to stabilize the rapid growth and metabolic spikes caused by earlier implants. In the heat of battle, this organ plays a key role in speeding up recovery and reducing fatigue. Its precise regulation allows space marines to endure long periods of stress and quickly heal minor internal injuries. While the hemostamen is generally stable and rarely mutates, any malfunction can have serious effects, such as muscle degradation and oxygen deprivation. Lehrman's organ. Often referred to as the healer, Lariman's organ is the fifth gene seed implant shaped somewhat like a liver and about the size of a golf ball. It sits snugly in the chest cavity, linking directly to the circulatory system. Once it kicks into gear, it starts producing Lariman cells that quickly form scar tissue to clot wounds within seconds, effectively stopping blood loss and preventing infection. The organ springs into action shortly after it's implanted, and its activity ramps up as the neophyte's metabolism speeds up. This organ is a major reason why Astartes are seen as nearly unkillable, as even severe injuries can be stabilized almost instantly, allowing them to keep fighting well beyond what a human could handle. However, its effectiveness can drop when it's paired with unstable progenoid lines. Named after the ancient Terran researcher who assisted the Emperor in crafting the original gene seed, this implant perfectly illustrates the blend of science and warfare that characterizes the Adeptus Astartes. Catalepsian node. Positioned at the back of the cerebrum, just above the brainstem, the catalepsian node is a remarkable feature that helps Astartes stay awake and alert for long stretches by selectively shutting down parts of the brain. This process kicks in when stress and fatigue hormones rise, allowing them to rest their minds without fully sleeping. Drawing inspiration from ancient ideas about how cetaceans sleep, especially bottlenose dolphins, the node simulates a partial shutdown of neural activity while keeping the user aware. While it's a game-changer in extended battles, relying on it too much can lead to hallucinations or even psychosis. One of the most extreme instances of its use was during the defense of Rin's world, where a Crimson Fist's kill team managed to stay combat-ready for 328 hours without sleep. Preomnor the seventh gene seed organ, known as the preomnor or neutralizer, is a secondary stomach implanted above the natural one. Its purpose is to protect space marines from ingesting harmful substances. When food or liquid enters the body, the preomnor scans it for toxins and neutralizes them before they reach the main digestive system. 
This organ allows Astartes to consume materials that would be lethal or indigestible to normal humans, including battlefield rations, alien substances, or contaminated supplies. In extreme cases, the preomnor can detach from the digestive flow, forcing the marine to expel the toxic matter before it causes harm. Omophagia also known as the remembrancer, this organ is implanted between the thoracic spine and the stomach wall. It connects directly to the central nervous system and cerebral cortex, allowing a space marine to absorb memories and experiences by consuming the flesh of another being. It decodes DNA, RNA, and protein sequences tied to memory, transmitting them as fragmented impressions to the Astartes brain. In survival or reconnaissance scenarios, a marine can gain tactical insight by eating native fauna or fallen enemies. While the omophagia is a powerful tool, it has also shaped the culture of certain chapters. Because of this implant, weird rituals involving flesh or blood consumption are seen in groups like the flesh terrors. In some gene lines, mutations have led to dangerous cravings. Multilung The imbiber is a third lung implanted into the chest cavity of a neophyte. It connects to both the pulmonary and circulatory systems, allowing space marines to breathe in environments with dangerously low oxygen levels or high toxicity. A specialized sphincter in the trachea enables all three lungs to operate together under normal conditions. In hostile atmospheres, another muscle seals off the natural lungs, forcing the multi-lung to take over. It then filters out toxins and absorbs oxygen directly, keeping the Astartes alive where normal humans would suffocate. The multi-lung's filtration system is highly efficient, dispersing harmful substances before they reach the bloodstream. This organ is vital for operations in alien worlds, void environments, or chemical war zones. Oculobe the 10th gene seed organ, also known as the Eye of Vengeance, is implanted at the base of the brain and wired directly into the optic nerve and retina. Its role is to stimulate the eyes with hormonal and genetic signals. This therapy works to reshape how the eyes grow and boosts the sensitivity of the retinal cells. Thanks to this enhancement, space marines gain incredible visual sharpness. They can see clearly even in near total darkness, which makes them incredibly accurate in low-light combat situations and void environments. The oculobe kicks in during adolescence once the earlier implants have stabilized the neophyte's metabolism and neural pathways. While it generally remains stable across most gene lines, there are rare mutations that can lead to visual distortions or hypersensitivity, which means some corrective treatment may be needed during training. Lyman's ear Named after a scientist who helped develop the original gene seed in the Emperor's laboratories during the 30th millennium, this organ is a complete replacement for one of the Space Marine's natural ears. Though it looks identical to a human ear on the outside, its internal structure is vastly enhanced. This implant rewires the inner ear to eliminate dizziness and motion sickness entirely, allowing Astartes to fight in zero gravity, unstable terrain, or high-speed drops without disorientation. More than just balance, Lyman's ear gives Space Marines the ability to consciously filter and amplify sounds. They can isolate specific audio cues, like distant footsteps, weapon discharges, or whispered communications, even in chaotic battlefields. This heightened auditory control makes them exceptional scouts, marksmen, and close combat specialists. Sus and Membrane also known as the hibernator, this organ enables an Astartes to slip into a state of suspended animation, whether by choice or as an automatic reaction to severe trauma. This is the 12th gene seed organ that gets implanted in the cranium and gradually integrates with the cerebrum, becoming a part of the Space Marine's neural framework. It allows bodily functions to slow down to almost nothing, allowing the Marine to survive even after sustaining injuries that would typically be fatal. They can remain in this dormant state for decades or even centuries, waiting to be revived through specific chemical triggers or hypnotic suggestions. The record for the longest time spent in stasis belongs to battle brother Silas Err of the Dark Angels, who managed to survive for an impressive 567 standard years. The Susan membrane serves as a last-ditch survival mechanism, often kicking in during critical battlefield situations. While it generally works well across most gene lines, its success relies heavily on proper training and precise biochemical support. Melanochrome Often referred to as the skin shield, this hormonal implant is intricately connected to the lymphatic system and plays a crucial role in managing melanin production in the skin. This allows space marines to better cope with harsh sunlight and various types of electromagnetic radiation. When they encounter high levels of radiation, the melanochrome kicks in, causing the skin to darken and providing a protective barrier against cellular damage. This response happens automatically and adapts based on the surrounding environment. Over time, different mutations in this organ have resulted in unique pigmentation traits among the various chapters. Take the Blood Angels and their successors, for instance, they typically have notably pale skin. On the other hand, the Salamanders are famous for their jet black skin and glowing red eyes, both of which are the result of variations in the melanochrome gene line. The skin shield is essential for long-term survival, particularly during planetary assaults and void operations, where radiation levels can be extremely high. Ulytic Kidney Dubbed as the purifier, this organ is implanted in the abdominal cavity and integrated into the Space Marine's excretory system. Its primary function is emergency detoxification, allowing Astartes to survive exposure to poisons, toxins, and gases that would overwhelm even their enhanced immune systems. 
When triggered, the organ isolates harmful substances absorbed through touch, inhalation, or ingestion. However, this process forces the Marine into unconsciousness, making it a risky safeguard during active combat. Because of this, its activation is typically a last resort. Beyond detoxification, the ulytic kidney also serves as a regulatory organ. It helps maintain the efficiency of the circulatory system and supports the function of both natural and implanted organs. This dual role makes it essential for long-term resilience, especially in war zones where chemical and biological threats are common. Neuroglottis. The 15th gene seed organ is implanted into the upper nasal passages and wired into the olfactory and gustatory systems. Once active, it allows a space marine to chemically analyze substances through smell or taste, instantly identifying toxins, nutrients, or edible components. This organ gives Astartes an advanced biochemical filter, enabling them to detect poisons before ingestion and assess the nutritional value of unfamiliar materials. It's especially useful during survival missions on alien worlds where local flora and fauna may be hazardous or unfamiliar. Beyond safety, the Neuroglottis grants space marines an extraordinary sense of smell, comparable to that of a trained tracking dog. They can follow trails by scent alone, detect hidden enemies, or identify individuals by subtle chemical signatures. Mucronoid also known as the weaver, this gene seed organ sits within the central nervous system. It's designed to react to certain chemical signals. When triggered, this organ prompts the body to release a waxy, mucus-like protein through the skin's pores. This secretion creates a protective barrier over the skin, shielding the marine from environmental dangers. It's particularly beneficial during suspended animation, as the mucronoid cocoon helps keep the body preserved. The layer it forms provides resistance against extreme cold, radiation, and even the vacuum of space, making it vital for survival in harsh conditions. While it typically remains dormant, the organ can be activated by the space marines, allowing them to gear up for deep space missions or cryogenic stasis. Although it generally functions well across most gene lines, any misstep in activation timing or chemical balance can lose its effectiveness. Fetcher's gland The 17th gene seed organ, known as the poison bite, features two specialized glands located in the mouth, usually found in the lower lip, salivary glands, or hard palate. When activated intentionally, these glands transform a space marine's saliva into a powerful, corrosive acid that can blind, injure, or even kill an enemy up close. While its use in battle is certainly impressive, the main purpose of this organ is actually digestive. It enables Astartes to break down materials that would normally be indigestible, like cellulose or alien substances, making it much easier to survive in hostile environments. The secretion of acid is carefully regulated and only activated when necessary, which helps to avoid any accidental damage. That said, this organ has shown some instability in certain gene lines. In chapters that trace their lineage back to primarchs like Rogel Dorn, the Betcher's gland has either weakened or stopped working altogether. Despite these inconsistencies, the poison bite remains a distinctive and adaptable asset in the biological toolkit of a space marine. Progenoid glands Commonly known as just gene seed, these glands are essential for how space marines reproduce. Each Astartes has two of these glands, one in the neck and the other in the chest. They interact with the other 17 implants to produce germ cells that reflect their genetic makeup, similar to how cells divide during mitosis. These germ cells are kept within the glands, similar to how reproductive cells are stored in regular humans. When the chapter's apothecaries cultivate them, they can develop the complete set of gene seed organs necessary to create a new space marine. However, it's important to note that the DNA passed on comes from the primarch, not the individual marine. The neck gland reaches maturity after about five standard years, while the chest gland takes around 10 years. Harvesting these glands usually happens after death, using a specialized tool known as a reductor, which is stored in the apothecary's narthesium. This extraction process is essential. Without it, a chapter can't replenish its numbers. For most Astartes, the progenoid glands symbolize their only legacy. Their sacrifices ensure the survival of their chapter, making the recovery of gene seed a sacred responsibility. In this way, the fallen continue to live on, and it's the closest they'll ever get to immortality. The Black Carapace The 19th and last gene seed organ, commonly known as the interface, is vital in a space marine's transformation. This neuroreactive, black fibrous material is surgically placed beneath the skin of the torso. Once it's implanted, an apothecary carefully creates access points through the carapace, allowing synthetic fiber bundles to grow inward and merge with the marine's central nervous system. After a few hours, the carapace solidifies and forms neural connection ports. These ports enable the Astartes to directly connect with the cybernetic systems of their power armor, syncing their reflexes, sensory input, and motor control with the armor's artificial intelligence. This integration offers incredible responsiveness and protection, making the armor feel like a second skin. While power armor can work without this implant, as seen with the Sisters of Battle and some Inquisitors, it doesn't provide the full neural integration. Without the black carapace, wearers can't achieve the same level of agility, reaction speed, or combat effectiveness. This final implant marks the completion of the neophyte's transformation. From this point forward, the Astartes are not just wearing armor, they are one with it. The black carapace is the bridge between flesh and machine, and the final seal of the Emperor's design. Primaris Gene Seed 
This is by far the most advanced evolution of the Emperor's genetic design, an improved, more stable version of the Astartes template. Primaris Space Marines are the next level of the Adeptus Astartes, but their gene seed still traces back to the original genetic heritage of the Primarchs. They were brought to life by Archmagos Dominus Belisarius Cowl, following the directives of Robute Gilliman. These Marines were genetically crafted using samples from all 20 Primarchs, although Gilliman limited their application to the nine Loyalist lines. Even with their superior physical traits, there are worries about how Primaris Marines will handle the unique quirks and flaws that come with certain chapter gene lines. Call's revolutionary work, powered by the Sangprimus Portum, a relic containing genetic material from the Primarchs themselves, gave rise to a new generation of Astartes, first unveiled during the Ultima founding. When you compare it to the firstborn, Primaris gene seed shows an impressive 0.001% deviation rate per generation, making it almost immune to mutation or instability. This genetic reliability finally tackled the problems that once plagued entire legions, like the Black Rage of the Blood Angels or the Feral Curse of the Canis Helix found in the Space Wolves. Primaris Marines come fully equipped with all 19 classic gene seed organs, along with three new implants. First, there's the sinew coils, also known as the steel within. These tough, metal-like cables enhance muscle fibers, providing them with incredible strength and durability. Then we have the Magnificat, or the Amplifier, which is a cortical lobe that boosts growth and amplifies other implants, drawing from half of the Emperor's Immortus gland. Lastly, the Belisarian Furnace, called the Revitalizer, is a dormant organ that activates during extreme trauma, releasing regenerative chemicals similar to combat stimulants. These enhancements push Primaris Marines to a level of transhuman capability that surpasses their firstborn counterparts. However, the complete understanding of these organs remained a mystery until the late 41st millennium. Hope you enjoyed the Space Marine Gene Seed Explainer video. Would you undergo horrific surgeries to achieve superhuman feats? Let me know in the comments and see you in the next video.